How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this really cool, really crazy animation loop. Um, but first, let me shout out today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. There are so many different types of classes for 3D, design, freelancing, tons of stuff on there, including tons of Blender classes. Currently, one of my favorite classes is Remington Markham's brand new class on how to create your first animation with Blender. Tons of amazing stuff in there. I would definitely check that out. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. Skillshare is incredibly affordable. It's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. No matter what 2021 brings you, you can spend it creating something meaningful with Skillshare's online classes. Skillshare offers membership with meaning. With so much to explore, real project to create, and the support of fellow creatives, Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth. Bring color, beauty, and fun to your year and vivid details to craft complex wonders. Skillshare believes strong community is essential to growth. Tap into the support of fellow creatives who provide encouragement, communication, and inspiration. When you join, you can try one of Skillshare's new classes, experience real-time inspiration as you connect with popular teachers while watching and working along with other members. Now, the first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare's premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Now let's get back into the tutorial. Tutorial. All right, so this is the crazy file we're gonna make today. Um, if we can go into the render view to see all the magic that happens, it's gonna load and now it looks crazy. So I'm gonna show you how to make this. It's not as complicated as it might seem. So let's get straight into that. First thing I want you to do is download this model off of Sketchfab, it's free. This is the model we're going to be using for our scene. So you can go ahead and grab that and import it and uh, we're gonna get going. All right, we're back in a blank document here in Blender. I'm gonna go to File, Import, and we're gonna select OBJ. So here in the desktop, you're gonna find it, Downloads, and you'll get a source file. Click the source, and here is your OBJ, and we're gonna import it right here and drop it into our scene just like this. Now, it's all kind of out of whack and it's sideways and all that fun stuff, so I'm gonna hit the tilde key and go to the front here. Actually, I'm gonna go here to the right, and uh, I'm gonna hit tab, hit A, just to make sure all the vertices are selected and we need to center out this anchor point here on this model. So hitting tab, you'll have this guy in the middle, put our anchor point in the middle, then I'm gonna hit tilde key and go to the front, make sure that anchor point is in the middle. And I'm gonna go here to the top and make sure that anchor point is in the middle as well. And then we'll hit tab again. And now you'll see we have our plane, our guy just sort of nice and centered out and that's super important. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go here and flatten him out. I went to the rotations and flattened it out so now it's at zero. This is what we want. Now, all right, so this is going to be a looping animation. So what I want this guy to do is fit in a certain grid, a certain size so that we know it's gonna work with the math of looping an animation. So the way I like to do that is I is not eyeballing it but sort of eyeballing it in a, in a degree, in a way. I'm gonna hit a plane and then I'm gonna hit S8 on that plane and I wanna fit this guy inside of him. So we're gonna go ahead and just scale it down and then I'm gonna bring it up a little bit. So I'm gonna hit the tilde key, go to the very top and make sure that this guy is completely fitting square inside and it's good that this model is also square so it works perfectly. And so we need to make sure that this isn't overlapping but this is working just the way we want. So make sure that he is fitting in here perfectly, otherwise your animation won't loop um, perfectly. So that's what we're trying to do here is just to make sure it's going to loop. So now that we have that, we'll, we'll delete that plane in just a second. So what, what I wanna do is add a little bit of magic to this guy. I'm gonna hit H on the plane to hide it and sort of goof around with this model. So what I'm gonna do is get here and add in a mirror. So we'll find mirror right here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the X axis right here and then hit the Y. And so now we have this happening here where we're gonna actually fly our camera through. And then what I wanna also do is bring that plane back so we can see it in our scene. So the plane is right there. 
what I want to do is get an object to actually instance this guy uh, to, uh, to mirror him so that visually when the camera runs through, you won't be able to tell that this model stops. We want it to loop as well. So I'm going to get in an empty shift A plane axis holding down control so it snaps to the grid, bring it to the very edge of our plane right there. Now I'm going to click this guy, mirror object, we're going to click uh, empty, and now he's doing what we want. And then what we can do now is click on the plane and scale it, uh, not the plane, sorry, click on the object and scale it till they touch like that. So it looks like right about there. It's okay if there's like a very microscopic gap, you won't be, to be able to see that once we're animating. Now that we have that, I'm gonna delete the plane. So we're done, now we can kind of visually see how things are going to animate. So we have this whole situation here. Now let's go ahead and take this situation. I'm gonna hit M, new collection, and I'm gonna call it loop. The reason why we're putting this guy in a collection because we are going to instance him now. So I'm gonna hit Shift A, collection instance, loop. And we're doing this instead of adding a uh, array modifier because this works better on our system and you can add a lot more things. You'll find out why in a minute, but this is much better, especially if you add objects, duplicate it a whole lot, you'll be able to have a lot of flexibility. Um, now make sure you are holding down control when you move this because it'll snap to the grid. So if you can see, he moves like that, hold down control when you are instancing so that this guy can work straight down the line, just like that. And now we have that. I'm gonna hit the tilde key again, it's right above the tab key for me. I'm gonna hit front and I'm gonna go to shift A and add in my camera. So now that we have a camera, I'm gonna go ahead and try to find that guy so he's way back here. Bring it up, I'm gonna hold down control again to snap it to the grid. And if you look out here in your transform, he's at negative eight because we did scale the original object at eight. So now that we have that, we're gonna go ahead and animate this guy to um, go through the way we want it to. So I'm gonna bring it up just like that. And I'm gonna go to my view. So math wise, if you did scale it up by eight, I think we're gonna go um, to positive 24 because we're at negative eight right now. Just to be sure, I'm gonna go into my edit preferences in animation here. I'm gonna make sure my interpolation is at linear. So I'm gonna click this and I'm gonna say 120 frames in the uh, frames here. And then I'm gonna scroll to the top. Now we can see that we added a keyframe. I'm gonna to go to the very end and type in 24. Let's hope this loops. It did, okay, so positive 24 is our perfect loop. It goes right to the very edge, oops. Too big, it goes right to the very edge of our object, our collection instance, and that's what we want. So if I were to press play and watch this outside of this guy duplicating down the line, we have a perfect loop and that's what we're going for. Now, if we wanna go check out the material preview, we have just this blank object here. What we're gonna do is add in our material. So I'm gonna go here to the shading, click on this object, make sure that your uh, Node Wrangler add-on is enabled, that comes with Blender by default, just go to the, to the add-ons in your preferences and look up Node Wrangler. I'm gonna hit Control T, and then I'm gonna hit G to move these guys up. I'm gonna go to open and find that source file um, right here, it's gonna say textures, and click that. And so what that's going to do is apply very easily our um, stone texture, and then what I'm gonna do is get a bump node right here, put the normal to the normal, and then I'm gonna go put the color into the height, and it's gonna just add a little bit of kind of bumping that's gonna allow the light to kind of interact with it. It looks bad now, but once we play with lighting, all that fun stuff, it's really gonna look pretty cool and pretty crazy. I'm gonna go ahead and save my file just in case a catastrophe happens. I'm gonna call it, call it rocks. <laughs> All right, now we can head on over into adding some um, some fun nodes and lighting to this guy. So the way I added those weird, crazy lava looking cracks is I hit Shift A and got in a mix shader. And then I got a emission node. So we'll go emission, make it the color we want it to be. And this could be anything you want. I'm gonna give my strength, well, leave the strength there for now. And I'm gonna put in my emission and put the shader right there. So now it's just washing over everything. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get a color ramp here 
and I'm gonna go right here and put this to the middle, make my linear to constant. So now we have a hard edge, super important. Put the color into the factor, get a Voronoi, Voronoi texture, and then I'm gonna go ahead, hit Control T again, get a different set of mapping because we're gonna add some fun stuff at the back. Otherwise we would just use this mapping. Um, and then we're gonna go here and put it on object. And then right here on distance, put that to the color ramp. And on F1, we're gonna go to distance to edge because that's gonna give us a nice rocky looking uh, texture. So if we do this, um, we're not getting what we want. What we're gonna do actually is flip the color ramp to invert the pattern. So now we're gonna get that fun stuff. And then we're gonna give myself like 0.1 on the scale. And then what we really wanna do is I'm gonna hold down shift on the position here and get this as thin as possible. So it looks like that's incredibly thin. You can barely see it until we add a little bit of strength. We'll give it like 50. So now you can start seeing that. But for me, the uh, edges are just a little too straight here. So what I'm gonna do is do a little bit of magic in the background here um, and mess with the Voronoi on what's called the vector line right here. So I'm gonna get a noise texture, you know, I, on the search, noise texture. Instead of a mixed shader, we're gonna get a mixed RGB because now we're dealing with colors and textures. Plug the object coordinate into color two. And so what we're gonna do now is start mixing them. Now you can see some craziness is happening. I'm gonna bring my detail to 16. And so we're gonna bring the factor back to one. So it's as if the noise texture isn't even here. So now we're gonna mix the original straight line with the noisy, um, texture here to do this. I'm going to bring my detail, I mean, sorry, my scale down to something like that. And now we have something pretty cool. So if we were to just go to the regular EV view, now we'll see that. Now in your EV settings, if you go here, make sure you are in the EV render engine, ambient occlusion, bloom, screen space reflections, and motion blur are on. Uh, one thing I'd like to do is bring my roughness down to something like this on the uh, principled. Let's go back to layout. So just for fun, we can kind of run through this and see how cool this is. And you can even have this just as a standalone piece, bring this down here. And uh, now you're running through some rocks. And it's pretty cool and it loops perfectly. It's super, super fun. Uh, we're not gonna stop there though. So let's keep going. Oops, I don't know what I just did in my rotation here. Oh, it needs to be at 90. All right, so now we have this. What I'm gonna do now is do some weirdness um, and do some crazy uh, collection instancing. So collection instance, get the loop again. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to flip it over, but I believe 180. Yes, and then bring it up like that. And then again, control D, holding down control, doing this fun little motion until we get to the end. All right, and now that loops. So now we can check out the render. It's going crazy. And then once we're done kind of designing this, we're gonna take more collection instances and spread them out by one on this side. But we're not gonna worry about that because that gets pretty heavy. And I'm gonna save my file. So let's go ahead and start lighting this guy. So we're gonna go ahead and get a light, point light, go to the rendered view. And then I'm gonna click on the point light. And um, let's see, where is he located? He's right there. He's probably too close. I'm gonna give myself a nice blue color, give my power a thousand. And then um, the bumping is really, really ugly. We'll deal with that in a second. Um, and we'll bring this guy down the line. So it's like that. There we go. I'm gonna go back to the shading here because the bumping is just making it look insane. So I'm gonna bring the strength down to like that okay so now we have something pretty pretty cool um on color back on the point light we're gonna give it a more vibrant blue like this and let's say 1500 okay that looks pretty awesome last thing we're gonna do is hit click on the point light hold control click on the camera control p to parent it object and then now when the camera moves it is lighting the scene like we'd want to. Now for me, I didn't like how you could see that there's an obvious stop to the model. 
So what I did was um, instance this again. So we're going to go ahead get a collection instance. Oops, no, sorry. Loop. That side, shift D, that side, hold down control again, and I'm just going to duplicate it down the line. So now that we have that, I'm going to click on the rendered view and run my camera through. It is going to be a little bit laggy. Um, I have a pretty good computer and it still lags, so don't think it's uh, something's wrong with the computer if you have some lag. And now we have this insane, really cool looping animation um, done pretty well, and you don't have to worry about getting crazy displacements because you already have a really nice model. Um, so if you want to export this guy, click on the little printer icon, uh, select your resolution, select where you want to save it. You can either do a PNG sequence and just um, directly spit that out, or you can do a FFmpeg video, which is just an MP4 file. Go from that to MP4, medium quality to perceptually lossless, render, render animation, and you're done. Uh, so that's how you do it. That's how you make this really cool animation. This is my final result on the one I made. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, see you in the next video.